What I want to show you today is terminating EtherCon. The reason why I want to show that is because in doing research for this project, I didn't find any videos where people did it entirely right. There were pieces that people did great that, that I learned a lot from, but there were also pieces that didn't feel right about uh, coming from network installation and all that. What I'm going to show you is, is a combination of what I learned from the spec of CAT7 termination and from seeing what people are doing right with EtherCon. Now, that said, I know you're going to say, but Mark, the spec for EtherCon is CAT5e. And you're right. Let's talk CAT specs. CAT5e has what's called STP, shielded twisted pair. So you've got twisted pairs and then you've got a shield around it. Um, and that's generally a foil. There's two different types of shielding. There's shielded twisted pair, STP, and there's foiled twisted pair. Foiled is where each individual twisted pair has foil around it. With CAT5, it is four pairs that are twisted. Then you go to CAT6, and then you have four pairs that are twisted plus a uh, plastic separator that goes between and it separates each twisted pair a little bit further from each other so there's less crosstalk. With CAT7, they replace that, that plastic separation with foiled twisted pairs. So each pair is individually foiled and, and separated. Now you can get foiled twisted pair CAT6, um, but not all CAT6 is foiled twisted pair. And not all CAT5 has uh, shielded twisted pair, so shielding around it. Um, the big advantage to CAT7, you will get foiled twisted pair and shielded twisted pair. The spec for our EtherCon requires CAT5e. The only difference between CAT5e and CAT7 is that there's more shield. So with AES50 spec, we have information in the ground. So it requires that shielding. If you don't have that shielding, you're gonna lose sync and you're gonna have a lot of issues. So all that said, the reason why I chose CAT7 is because all of the specs of CAT5e are in there, plus you have each individual pair foiled and shielded, which reduces crosstalk between there. We have external shield, which reduces the amount of external interference. All that giving us a more robust signal over a longer distance. This mitigates a lot of the issues that can arise. Does that make sense? So all we're doing is reducing the possibility that there could be any interference in our overall signal. So let's make a cable. In AES-50, some of the sync information goes through the ground. I've seen too many people making EtherCon cables on YouTube and not connecting the ground. That is integral in the EtherCon spec, all EtherCon spec. But if you don't connect that, it will not work for AES-50. Um, there are some others that don't have as stringent of a spec, but AES-50 is a very stringent spec, which requires that ground. So do not leave that in connected. This connector, which can be tricky for some people, uh, is gonna help us make sure that we have full contact with our ground. In some CAT7 installation specs, they use um, foil tape to help make certain that that ground gets connected. Uh, most important part, get your boot on. I prefer to use Neutrik. Should have done this before I started stripping the cable. Next step, let's take my shears, go around, 
clip this because we don't need this whole sheath. We just need to make contact. Okay, pull that off. Pull this down. You've also got your drain wire. Um, that's going to help you with this connection. These are electrician shears, by the way. So, totally cut cables. Use it up to um, 10 gauge, which is fantastic. Uh, that's why it's got that dip. In there. All right, so we'll separate out our twisted pairs. Find the edge of the foil. I'm just gonna take a little nip out of the foil so that it just rips right off. So you'll see I'm leaving about this much foil in there. So now that we've got these, we'll untwist the pairs. in order. Just gonna push down each one of these. Now this part is gonna be embarrassing because these take me a long time, which is why I hate them. These are a pain in the butt. So I've got one here going across, and then we can now snug that in and terminate. Give it a tug, make sure it's in there. So then we have jacket, like this. So now we have jacket, copper tape, our shielding, perfectly secured, and then our determination end. Just now, roll that up. So we have a retention clip. We can either push it in there or so you can push that retention clip underneath here or remove it entirely. Now your retention clip is this entire body. Make sure this is good and snug. Snug that in. So 
this is snug inside there. This is snug into the end. So now that I've done the easy one, next step is to do the other end up in the tiny tech closet.